Hi everyone, it's Jeff Hopper back with Jeff Cranford. We have been talking about who's a Christian. And Jeff, when we left off last time, we were considering the possibility that there are those who are new in their faith, those who are much more mature, and what we might expect from a Christian along the phases of life is going to be different, isn't it? It really is, and I, I think one of the really challenging things for anybody who's ever tried to teach the Word is that you have such a disparity of people in the audience. Yes. You have people that have been walking with the Lord for maybe 50 years, and you have others that maybe have just are exploring Christ, and you have others that are brand new believers. And so many in many of our Lynx fellowships, we, we've, we have a, 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 ver, a large de, a degree of change between those who've been walking and those who are just starting to walk, and the expectations are radically different. They're different in Scripture. Mm -hmm. Paul even talks about it in Hebrews chapter 5. He said, look, by this time, and he was kind of chastising the Messianic Jews in his letter to the Hebrews. He says, by this time, you guys ought to be teachers of the word, and yet you still have need for milk. Uh, you don't, you're not ready for solid food. You're not ready for meat. And what you need is you need practice to have your senses trained to discern good and evil. And he goes on and gives actually a list a little bit later about what are some of the elementary principles of God, and they still didn't have it down. So when I think about my three daughters, I have three daughters, and I think about my eight-year-old, I have very different expectations for my eight-year-old than I do my 15-year-old or my 13-year-old somewhere in between. Good different expectations, you. yeah. <laughs> and they have, I don't know what their expectations of me are, but I have different <laughs> expectations of them. And so we see a progression in their life, and I think there's a propensity for us to take a snapshot of people in time, and God doesn't do that. He really does have the ability to see the end from the beginning, as Scripture so clearly says, him being the Alpha and the Omega. He can see the end, so oftentimes he, he recognizes where we are, he understands that, and so we walk in greater levels of faith. In fact, Paul tells the Romans, he said, faith comes by hearing, in hearing by the word. So there's a time and season, Ecclesiastes talks about, there's seasonalities in our life where we learn progressively, as we talked about last time, how to move into being formed like Christ. There's that, that uh, passage as well in Philippians about working out your salvation with fear and trembling. Yes. So there's this understanding that as I become increasingly connected to Christ, increasingly aware of what he's done for me, things are going to change. There's going to be a struggle in that change. Sometimes it's going to be difficult. Sometimes it might be smooth sailing. He kind of push, gives me the push that yeah, I no need. Question. But there's those, you know, there are varying rates of, of growth. As we grow chronologically, we also grow spiritually. Correct. But a lot of that takes us, keeps taking us back to one central place, doesn't it? To the cross. Well, it does take us back to the cross. And the kingdom starts at the cross. And once the cross is recognized and there's repentance, and that's just the basic, what many would call maybe a salvation prayer, the Holy Spirit comes in the form, Paul called it the imperishable seed. It's called the word. But James says, receive the word implanted, which is able to save your soul. But it really is all back to the cross. The, the beginning point is the cross, uh, and the foot of the cross is, as we say, very, very level. And then after that, the seed is planted because of faith in what Jesus did on the cross, his merit, not ours. But then we do have a determining factor as we get clearly in Scripture. There is a determine, determining, uh, there's a determination in our own spiritual journey, how fast we move, where we move, uh, and it's incumbent upon us to pick up our cross and follow. And I think as we progressively understand that, we understand more about stewardship. And it's actually what Paul says, by this time some of the elementary principles are, and one of them is eternal judgment. Just the recognition that we will give an account for the life that we've lived in the flesh is a very significant teaching and not one that you maybe get in the first two or three days of your, uh, of your understanding of Christ but certainly one that should be uh, a part of your uh, kingdom understanding to be what Paul oftentimes called to be in the faith. What it means, and that's so significant because it, re it, it recalibrates our entire life and gets us focused. We were actually at a Lynx Fellowship this morning, gets us focused on the things above, as Colossians mm -hmm. 3, 2 says, and not on the things on the earth, mm. which is very significant. Well, we've been talking about humility, the cross, some significant themes. Let's come back to those. Next Sounds time. great.